Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome as we gather here on October 31st on Halloween as family of God. And for those watching at home, welcome, whether you're watching streaming or you recorded the service and you're watching sometime later on today, it's good to be together as God's children. And as I begin, I want to make a couple announcements. One is regarding right after our service, uh, Dr. Althea Simpson, our director of discipleship, has planned a kind of a Halloween celebration so it's going to be in Cyril's Hall, and we're invited to go and decorate pumpkins and have some snacks and just to be together as a church family. So again, after the service is over, we go to Cyril's Hall for this Halloween celebration. So uh, I think our families were notified about this event, and we're all part of our church family, so we're all invited to participate. So that's Halloween. Upcoming holiday we know is Christmas, and last week Marta and Deborah did a great job explaining Operation Christmas Child. And again, we have our boxes, and we're being encouraged to take these boxes home and fill them up and bring them back next Sunday. So next Sunday is the deadline. We're encouraging all of us to fill these boxes and bring them back to the church. And inside these boxes is a little slip of paper. You can mark a the sex and age of the child you're buying for. And we do have flyers, pieces of paper that have the, uh, just some hints of things we can purchase to fill up our box. So uh, please take these home and bring them back next Sunday. And you know, Marta has been also receiving checks and cash. So if you don't wanna go out and purchase, see Marta and she will take care of that. 
Another announcement is that uh, WSCS is back. So like, yay. So like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Oh, and there's Hannah, so Hannah's right back there. So there's the phoenix, so they're back on Tuesday, November the 9th at 11 a.m. So ladies, you're invited to be part of this time together. They'll be looking at uh, Norman Rockwell, that's gonna be the program. So please indicate that on your calendar and come back and be together. And again, we're encouraging folks to wear a mask for that time. Finally, we have the last announcement having to do with our commitment drive, our campaign, stewardship campaign, and Ben Dijak is our uh, stewardship chairperson, and he's got an announcement this year. So, Ben? Oh, thank you, David. I'll get you some microphone. Greetings, everybody, brothers and sisters of Franklin Church, those of you in our sanctuary as well as those streaming online. October's been Stewardship Month, and today, the last Sunday of October, is Stewardship Sunday. We have had a very interesting and um, eventful summer and fall. And I've spoken to many of you individuals, I've gone to all the meetings, a lot have expressed a lot of um, pain, suffering, and frustration, even sometimes anger. All of us are saddened by these events. However, we also have found out we have some financial challenges happening at our church also, so it's been a very trying time this fall. But I want you to think of this not as a difficult or an obstacle, but an opportunity. Think of this as an ability to regrow our congregation. The first step we need to do is forgiveness. The past happened and we can't change it, but what we can do as a group is forgive. And, and you heard Reverend Diana Gowdy talk about that, that little flame that burns inside us. We must extinguish it and forgive. And I know most of you, and I have a lot of faith in all of us that we can achieve this. Next, we might also think about stewardship. And you heard about Reverend Bob Gowdy talk about the joy, satisfaction, and the happiness that stewardship and giving does, helping others. Now, a lot of you express doubts and concerns about the church, but let me make this clear. We may sometimes doubt God. We drive home thinking, I really, is this happening? Uh, maybe, God, are you really there? But let me make this perfectly clear. God does not doubt us for one minute. God has got our backs 24-7. And second, this church has served Franklin community for 180 years. This church has been there when we needed it. This church has had our backs. The question, my friends, today is, are we going to support our church? Think about that as you fill out your pledge cards. Be part of the future of Franklin Community Church. Thank you. Now, a letter was sent out on Tuesday morning to the whole congregation via snail mail, but uh, talking to several folks, uh, that hasn't been received. So again, a lot of what you're hearing today might be a surprise, and we apologize for that. Uh, Again, the mail service has not been as uh, efficient as we'd hope it to be. So again, we're encouraging all of our church family to prayerfully consider how they'll support the church in 2022. And again, pledge cards were mailed and they'll eventually be received. For those with us this morning in your bulletins, there is a insert that has a commitment card on there and it's right in the middle. And again, you can see that there's different things that we're being asked to prayerfully consider. There's our financial contribution, but also there's the prayers for the church, there's the ways we might serve the congregation, and maybe even people we might invite to be part of our church family. So again, since it's kind of abrupt kind of news for many of us here, so at the end of the, my message, there'll be an opportunity for those that are prepared to make that commitment. But again, maybe we're just not ready to make that kind of commitment. So we invite those here and those at home who receive the electronic bulletin to, again, prayerfully consider what kind of commitments you're gonna estimate for next year and either bring those back with you next Sunday and we can make that commitment or through the week, you can mail that or send a response electronically. So again, all good plans. We were hoping to get these letters out, people receive them to prayerfully consider those, those giving amounts and then make the commitment today and we'll still make a commitment but we recognize that a lot of us won't have the opportunity to really 
give an honest consideration of what we want to commit for next year. So that's all right. So we're not expecting you to just write down some number, but again, to prayerfully consider that. But if we do have any that have that card at the end of the message my, this morning and during the hymn, you'll be invited to come and make that offering uh, on the altar. So again, just a word about our stewardship campaign, and we've been very faithful. And uh, again, God will bless us as Ben shared in our decisions. Well, those are the announcements for this morning. And now it's time for our call to worship, and I invite you to stand as Ben will lead us in our call to worship. And God created the heavens and the earth. And he gave them to us to use and to enjoy. And God breathed life into each of us and set us upon the earth. And God sent Jesus Christ to save us from the whole of death. Everything that fills our souls with gladness and light is a gift from the loving Creator. We have been entrusted with unfathomable riches. For all this, our God is to be praised. Let us worship God together. Please remain standing for opening hymn, I Sing the Almighty Power of God, number 152 in your hymnal, and on the screen. Please be seated for a hymn of meditation, Surely the Presence of the Lord, number 328 in your hymnal. remain seated for the prayer of the people, followed by silent meditation and the Lord's Prayer. Doing Stewardship Month and Stewardship Sunday, Lord, we ask you to provide us with the power, the knowledge, and the energy to carry out your word. Let us look at the 
a list of people that are suffering on our chart in our church bulletin. Say a kind word to those people. Say a prayer to those people. Reach out to those, your friends, your family, your co-workers that appear to be in need. Reach out and help those people. Ask us for the wisdom, the courage, and the moral and ethical beacon that we can navigate these times. So we can say at the end of the week, I made my little part of the world a better place. And now for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we continue our worship this morning, it's time to think about our gifts that we've been given and the ways we respond to those gifts. And through the church, we do that through our offering. And again, before COVID, we used to have ushers who would come through and pass the plates through the aisles. But... uh, Since COVID, we have our plates by our doors, so if you brought your offering with you, you're invited to place those in the offering plates. And for those watching at home, or even those here, we can always give electronically through our website, or we can mail in our offering to the church. And every time we make these offerings, we do it in prayer. And we pray that God will use these gifts to continue the work of his ministry here in Franklin and beyond, And also God will bless us and will continue to watch over us and use us to, again, to advance the kingdom of God. So bless us and these offerings, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I invite us to stand to sing together our doxology.
Our scripture lesson today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 9. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of the scriptures. Thank you, Ben, and thank you for all the work you're doing in our stewardship campaign, and uh, again, I appreciate your uh, leadership on that endeavor. And just, uh, I don't know if bring embarrassment or not, but I just want to share a celebration. Uh, the word's kind of getting out that uh, Maria and Mark are engaged to be married. Oh, well, you're already married, so you're already married, so strike that. They're already married, so come on out, Maria. Come on, Mark. Now we're going to give you a blessing right now. So I'm going to invite us to stand up, and we're going to raise our hands as a form of blessing, and I'm going to say a prayer over this dear couple. So gracious, loving God, we thank you for Marie and Mark and their journey and their friendship and their love and companionship, and now their commitment to one another as husband and wife. And we celebrate their love and pray you continue to journey with them in the years to come to strengthen and enrich that love that they already share. And they've been a precious part of our church family for years, and we just celebrate this good news with you and with all of us. So bless again, Mark and Maria, in your holy name. Amen. 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 And now I invite us to pause in a moment of prayer. And now, O Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation, the spirit of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, later this morning, I will be gathering with the Jenke family in the Calmbarium as we place in one of the niches the ashes of Mark Jenke. Now, though he died back in 2010, it was recently decided by the family that his ashes need to be interred at the Franklin Columbarium. And that actually will be the third such committal that I will have done in this month of October. And besides those committals, there was also that big service we had for Dave Roberts on the 18th. 
So for the month of October, there's been a lot of saying goodbye to those that we knew and we loved. Now, as part of all those services, there was a time of remembering. How would Trudy Duval, Tom Richford, Mark Jenke, and Dave Roberts be remembered? What words would we use to describe their life and the impact that they had upon us? Well, friends, there will come a time, hopefully way in the future, when we will be the ones being remembered, that our friends and family will gather together for our services, and what words will they use to characterize our life? Loving, caring, compassionate. Those are good words. Those are words we all want to be identified by. But how about the word generous? Is that a quality that we would like to be remembered, known, and remembered by and known for? Now, Winston Churchill, he said that we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Think about those words. Very profound. And I believe he was correct. That I believe God created us to be generous. God made us with a willingness, right, to, to give back to God and to share with others. But that tendency that we have inside of us is sometimes challenged by voices inside our head. Now, one of those voices is a voice of fear, which tells us if you give, there may not be enough left over for you, that feeling of scarcity. So maybe we're afraid to be generous because of the fear of what might happen to us. Will we have enough to pay the bills down the road? And what if something breaks or goes wrong? Or what if the stock market takes a dip? Will we have enough? So sometimes those fears of sake of scarcity causes us to hoard together what we have. Now, last week, those who were here and watched the sermon heard Bob Gowdy tell a great story about a couple in one of his churches who gave significantly so they could build an elevator in their church. And later, after they made that donation, the stock market dropped. And he asked them if they had any regrets in giving so much money to the church. And they, say, they said, not at all, they replied. And then she quoted, the wife quoted something she read in a devotional, that the things we give away are the only things we really have. Now, when Bob shared that story, it reminded me of another story of a man who gave much more. He gave millions and millions of dollars to establish a university in Texas. And several years later, he lost everything. And somebody asked him if he regretted giving so much to the university. And his response was telling. Regret it, he said. Look at the school. That's the only lasting thing I've done with my money. Had I given, if I had not given that money to the school, I would have lost that money too, and there would be nothing to show for it. So this man knew that we were created to be generous, to give and not to hoard. He knew that hoarding his money was not only futile, but it was also fruitless. Now that's one voice. Now I believe there's another voice in our head that we struggle with, and that's the voice of self-gratification, which tells us that if you give, that maybe you won't have enough money to buy the stuff that you need to make your life happy. Because if we're really honest, we live in a culture that tells us the message that life consists of abundance of possessions and pleasurable experiences. So sometimes the tendency, I think, is to think if we give, then there won't be enough left for me. So again, voices in our head keeping us from being as generous as we want to be. So how did we do defeat these voices of fear and self-gratification? I believe we do it by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. When we give our life to Christ, we invite the Holy Spirit into our life to begin changing us from the inside out. And as that happens, our fears are quieted, and our desire is to bring pleasure to God and to others. Now, speaking of pleasing God, if you take time to read through your Bible and find examples of worship of the Israelites and the early, uh, early Christians, it's not the songs that they sang. It's not the sermons that were preached, but we read about the offerings that were given. 
because the main component of worship was building an offer, building an altar, and then offering offerings upon it. The Israelites would sacrifice animals as well as grain as an expression of their gratitude, their devotion, and their desire to honor God. Now it says in the scripture that the scent of the offering was pleasing to God. That's what it says, the scent of the offering was pleasing to God. Now it isn't that God enjoyed the smell of burnt meat or burnt or grain or offerings. Rather that God saw that the people were giving gifts as an expression of love, faith, and in their desire to please and honor God, and that's, that's what moved God's heart the desire of those people to make those sacrifices. Now, I've shared this story before, but I'll do it again as we're sharing it. It's about Adam Hamilton, and he's the senior pastor of one of the largest United Methodist churches in this country. He tells a story about one time years ago, he took a vacation with his family. And they were gonna be gone a few days, and his daughters were very young. And as they got ready for their vacation, he told each daughter that they would get $20 to spend on whatever souvenirs they wanted. So on the very first day there in Jackson Hole, they went into a gift shop, ready to take a hike around the lake. And on that very first day, his daughter Becca saw this hat and was really fascinated by that hat. Said, Dad, isn't this a cool hat? And Adam said, yeah, that looks really nice, but you know, it's very expensive. And it would cost almost your whole $20 to buy that hat. Kind of discouraging her. But she said, you know, Dad, you told us we could spend that money on anything we wanted to spend it on. So reluctantly, he gave her that $20. And very sternly said, you know, this is the only money you're going to get for the rest of the vacation. So she took the money and bought the hat. And they started on their hike around the lake. And about halfway around the lake, they stopped for a little break. And as we were resting, Becca came up to Adam and gave him the hat and said, happy birthday, because it was his birthday that day. So he said, he hugged her, he started crying, because he realized that his little girl took all her money to buy him something to show him how much she loved him. Friends, that's what happens when we make an offering at church, right? We're taking the money that we have or we've received to show God that we love God. We love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. And we're hoping and praying that you will use our gifts to make a difference in the world. Now, when I think about a generous life, though, I'm thinking not just what we give in church. That's part of our generosity. But generosity happens in so many other ways, so many other places. It happens to the people that are in our orbit I think about the time we give to help somebody who needs something fixed, right? And we have the expertise to do that. Or I think about preparing meals for a neighbor who is either sick or as a family member that's sick, and we just take our talents of cooking and we make things and we take it over to show them that we love them and we care for them. I also think about generosity of knowing like a mission or an organization that's doing good work, helping people in need, and we decide to contribute right, to their organization so that they can continue to do these good things. So to me, people that are generous are folks who share their time, their talents, and their treasures to those around them, not just to the church, but to those around them. And I believe that our generosity to God and others not only touches God and touches other people, but it also enriches our own lives. It changes us. As Adam Hamilton writes in his book enough that he writes, human beings were created with the need to be generous. And when we're not generous, it becomes a spiritual problem. In fact, we may have lots of stuff. Our portfolio might be through the charts, but still we can have a joyless life because again, money doesn't buy happiness. We can have all the stuff in the world and not have the joy that comes with God. So giving, sharing what we have brings us joy and satisfaction. I remember if you were here last week, the slide Bob used. It shows pictures of he and Diana at various points in their life with blessings of joy just pouring down on them from their heavenly purses that were talked about in the scripture last week. 
There's a joy from the heavenly purses just blessing them because they've been blessing and generous to other people. But it's not just the Gaudis. We could put ourselves in those pictures as well. We can't all fit in there, but some of us can fit in there, and again, it's the same thing that happens. When you and I, when we're generous, that's what happened. From the purses of heaven, we're, we're poured upon joy and satisfaction because of the gifts that we decide to share through the church and with others. So that's why every fall we have this stewardship campaign in the church. And some pastors, they're not really thrilled about this process. They just kind of go through the motions because, again, it's what you need to do in order to fund the church. But I don't see it as drudgery. I see this campaign as an opportunity. So I'm never embarrassed or hesitant to ask people to think about what we want to give. Because what I'm doing is giving all of us an opportunity to experience the joy, the satisfaction of giving, of being generous with what we have. So again, I hope all of us think and pray about what we're going to give to the church, but others. And we have a generous spirit, and we do that with a generous heart. But when we do give, again, our scripture challenges us to think about our motivation as to why do we give. It says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly a response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Today and this week, you're being asked to consider what you're going to give to the church. And again, on the cards that are being mailed, and the cards that are in your bulletins, on the cards that are sent electronically, you're being asked to consider multiple contributions, not just your giving, not just your finances. But on that card, I also ask, what am I going to do to pray for the church? How often am I going to attend worship live or at home? How will I serve the church? Who will I pray for? Who will I invite to come and join me for worship? So again, this, this giving to the church is multifaceted. It's not just our finances, but there's other components as well. Again, makes up our whole life and how we live. So friends, my sermon today is defined by generosity. And though I focus on other aspects of our life, it's also the church that I encourage us to think about. Again, that scripture verse from Paul, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Friends, my prayer for all of us is that we will reap a generous crop. And that comes from, again, decisions we make, whether we're going to be generous or not. And ultimately, when I, David Hustletine, get called home, and when my family and friends gather for my service, I hope that generous is one of the words that they'll use to describe my life. Well, I said earlier in the service that in your, off, or in your uh, bulletins, there are those commitment cards, and you may or may not be ready to bring them up to the altar. And if not, that's fine. We'll have a time next week to dedicate these as well. But if you are ready, to make that commitment if you have those cards. During our final hymn that we'll sing this morning, you'll be invited to come up and on the altar place those cards. Because again, back in thousands of years ago, the ancient Israel, Israelites would take their meat and their grain and put it on the offering as a sacrifice to God. So this is our sacrifice that we're making. So again, I'm going to invite us to put those cards on the altar, and I'm not going to burn them, but I'm going to bless them. And I'll bless those cards and the commitments we'll be making through this coming week. But let us be in a time of prayer. So gracious and loving God, we thank you for all that you've given to us. And again, there's never anything demanded of us. But out of a faithful response, out of a generous heart, we decide to give just a portion back to you and the church. Last week, Bob talked about the tithe and giving 10%. And for some, that's a challenge, and we strive to do that. And for others, it's whatever, whatever they can do that is significant, that, again, represents their commitment to you in this church. So bless us in whatever we decide, and bless us as we try to be a blessing to others as we share our time, talents, and our resources with those around us. 
So thank you for all you've given to us and all that we give. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So again, if you are ready, we invite you during the closing hymn. And if not, there'll be a time next week to do so or for those at home to please uh, send those commitment cards to the church. So, gracious, loving God, we present on your offering these our commitments, these estimate of giving. And we pray your blessing upon them and us as we do the best we can to fulfill these commitments. But again, they're not carved in stone. But again, it's just an expectation or try to fulfill to, again, be generous to you through the church so that the church, this church, can continue its good work. So, bless these givings, and we will give them in Christ's name. Amen. Well, friends, after the benediction, again, Dr. Althea Simpson has planned a special Halloween celebration, so please make your way to Cyril's Hall. But may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the love and knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus the Christ. And may the grace of God Almighty be with us and sustain us this day and every single day. Amen. Amen.